It's not time to hit pause yet. <laughs> See what I did there? Dog joke. This question comes up more often than you'd think. Hey Tommy, how come you don't use a guide dog? Well, to be quite honest, my situation doesn't call for it. I walk around with a cane. I'm a, I'm a cane traveler. I've been using it for a long time. You've seen it in videos and stuff. I do very well with it. You know, I can get pretty much anywhere I need to with my cane. If I need to go someplace really far, I can use Uber or Lyft or jump in a taxi. I don't live in a giant city, right? So I don't need a dog for that. I certainly don't need one in the house. You know, I know my way around my own home. You know, it just doesn't fit into my life. You know, it's just, it's, it's not for me right now. Listen, this isn't to say that I wouldn't get one, but for right now, I just don't need one. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with having a guide dog. I mean, it's almost like having a child, you know, every day. I've got to do stuff for the dog and I've got to be home to take care of the dog. It's also an added expense. It's a lot to do. I mean, a, a cane, I just fold it up and put it away. <laughs> However, I have had dogs in the past. I had two of them, <laughs> one for each hand. <laughs> I'm just fooling you. Now I had two separate dogs at different times. At that time I needed one because where I was living, it was a far walk to anywhere. You know, it was a long walk into town. It was a long walk to the bus stop where I was gonna go to work. Hell, I was walking on streets with no sidewalks, you know? So the dog kept me pretty safe and it was really, really helpful. My first dog was called Ivan uh, and he was a German Shepherd and he was young and you know what? I was not a good dog handler. He liked to jump and bark and frighten people and I wasn't correcting him fast enough and it didn't work out with us. <laughs> we were together for about six months and that was it. So he went back and was replaced and a couple of months went by and I was given a new dog. Now this dog was called Clancy and he had been with somebody before and we got on great. He was older so he was a little bit more chill and it really worked out nicely between us and he was wonderful. He was a great, great dog. I had Clancy for probably three, four years. You know, it was a good long time. He was probably about five when I got him. And then by the time he was about eight or nine, his hip displays just started to act up. You know, he couldn't get on the bus anymore. He had difficulty coming up and down stairs and getting into cars. And so I took him to the vet one day and they told me that yeah, he's got a hip dysplasia and he can't work anymore. <laughs> nice bedside matter, that freaked me out that day. So when it was time, I just gave him back to the place where he came from. And they actually put him in a nursing home, which is fun, you know, kind of a flat place, right? With no real stairs and stuff. You know, and all these people in this nursing home had a pet and a very well behaved pet. Oh my God, having a guide dog was great. There was a lot of cool things about it. I mean, they're so well trained, they can do all kinds of things. Like on a train platform, for example, if I get a little confused or whatever, and sort of walking towards the edge of the platform, the dog would literally stand between me and the edge of the platform and not let me go forward. I'll never forget one time I was going to work. I got off the bus and it was really noisy and I was in front of a parking garage and I asked him to go and he wouldn't go. And then I heard a car come by and I was like, holy cow. You just saved my life, Clancy. Way to go, kid. He was also very helpful on walking. I mean, my cane does a good job on the ground, right? But if there's something low hanging, the dog would actually stop. So I'd have to reach around a little bit and reach up in front of me and see if there were trees. And there were. And then I would touch the trees with my hand and ask him to go ahead again. And we would go. You know what else he knew? Let's say you and me went somewhere and we go in your car. The dog's riding in your car and we go like to the mall or whatever. And then we come back out and I could actually say to my dog, find the car. And he would find the car that we were in before. So it was a lot of fun, but there was a lot of responsibility that comes with the dog. I mean, one of the things I had to do was pick up after him. And people go, how the heck did you do that? I could take him outside, for example, and say to him, get busy. And that would mean it was time to do his thing. And he'd start to sniff and go back and forth and back and forth. And, you know, I put my foot right next to his leg and then when he'd move, I could just reach down with a plastic bag and just pick it up and flip the bag inside out and throw it in the garbage. And people say, why did you ever pick that stuff up? Well, here's a simple answer. I didn't want to step in it, right? I can't see where it is. So if I don't pick it up, I'm going to be wearing it. The other thing I used to do with them as well, people would always say, does your dog bite? And I'd always say, sure. <laughs> what I mean is his food. <laughs> I don't know whether he'd bite you or not, but you know, I give you a vague answer. That way you won't try him. I think we've come to the tail of this video. <laughs>